Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. I think there's a lot of confusion sometimes when we talk about pool sanitizers. So I'm going to spend some time going over pool sanitizers. These are basically the chlorine types you would use in your pool to keep it safe and swim ready. And I recently did a survey on YouTube, and I have the results from that survey on the preferred sanitizer that a lot of the users or viewers use in their pools. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I mentioned that I did a survey on YouTube, and if you want to get the notifications um, for the surveys that I put out there, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you would just click on the little bell icon on my channel, and then it'll give you notifications whenever I post a survey. So... I have the survey in front of me here, and so far there's been 465 responses or votes for the survey, plus a lot of comments explaining which sanitizer the viewers will use in their pool. But basically, let me redo the results here of the survey, and then I'll kind of unpack that and go over the different sanitizers. So the the winner is liquid chlorine at 35%, and then 3-inch trichlor tablets at 33%, Cal Hypo came in at 6%, and Diachlor came in at 1%, and the Saltwater System came in at 24%. So the top three basically were Liquid Chlorine, 3-inch Trichlor Tablets, and Saltwater Systems in that order, although the tablet use and Liquid Chlorine were pretty close together. And so it looks like Liquid Chlorine is definitely making some ground, or picking up some ground here as a primary sanitizer. And depending on your region, the price of liquid chlorine varies um, by region. In Florida, it's really inexpensive. And then in California, it's more expensive over this way for the liquid chlorine. Most of the pool stores will carry liquid chlorine now, including Leslie's Pool Supply. So you can find it readily available there. You can also get it at Walmart. You can get it at Home Depot. Um, Just about any outlet will sell liquid chlorine. In some strength so you just have to be aware that liquid chlorine can be weaker in certain situations and in certain outlets so most pool stores will carry the 12.5 percent Hassa brand liquid chlorine in the west coast and in the east coast is about the same percentage and then if you go to maybe a home depot or walmart you may get you know 10 percent um, of the active um, ingredient in there And, um, of course, if you want to use straight bleach from your um, grocery store aisle, um, the bleach is about 6.7% or maybe even 6% or 5% depending on the strength. So it's about half the strength of the store version of the liquid chlorine. And that is a factor because if you're using a weaker type of chlorine or a weaker percentage of chlorine, um, you're going to have to add more for your pool to turn around or more for it to stabilize in your pool to reach the ideal level of three parts per million and in some cases maybe even higher in the summertime five parts per million so you have to be aware of that and I guess I should back up for a second here and explain um, why you need chlorine in your pool in the first place basically it's there to kill uh, pathogens viruses and other um, things that may be Um, in the water like bacteria and the chlorine is very effective in killing that Um, kind of liken it to you know cleaning your cutting board at home you know it has a lot of bacteria on there you may have different things that touch that and the most effective way to clean your counters and cutting boards and utensils is with a bleach product and same goes with the pool the reason why we use a sanitizer in the water is because you want to make sure you kill the pathogen so that the water is safe to swim in. And that's the main reason, of course, it also keeps the water clear because when algae and organics in the water um, get to a certain point, um, the water will become cloudy and become green. They'll have algae forming. So all all of these are what the sanitizer prevents. So 
if your pool has cloudy water or algae forming, chances are that the sanitizer or chlorine level is at a low point. And ideally, you want to keep your chlorine at three parts per million, and it can go higher than that. In the summertime, a lot of um, people keep their pool at three to five parts per million, which is perfectly safe to swim in. Um, the health departments um, will allow you to have your chlorine level at 10 parts per million in commercial pools. And the reason why they go so high is because they want to make sure that everything is killed quickly in a commercial pool because the bathed load is a lot higher. So the sanitizer plays a very important role in keeping you safe as you swim in your pool. And so I did the survey to kind of see um, by the regions of what sanitizer is most preferred. So back to the liquid chlorine as your sanitizer. Um, the best way to know how much to add to your pool is now with the modern technology to use an online calculator or an app on your phone. So there are two really good ones that I recommend. I like the poolcalculator.com. Um, you just type in your pool size and then um, by gallons of water, or liters of water, and then you would type in the chlorine level you tested at. So again, I'll back up again. You want to make sure you test your pool water weekly to get the chlorine reading in the pool. And for more advanced and more accurate readings, you want to get a test kit that does your total chlorine because sometimes the chlorine is what we call combined chlorine. It's not effective. And so the best test kits will test for free chlorine and then total chlorine. And since the combined chlorine is in, in, makes the chlorine ineffective in the water, you want to have that combined chlorine close to zero when you test for that. And so get a good test kit like a Taylor K2006 or 2005. The Lamont Color Q Pro 7 um, is also a good test kit. The Pool Lab 1.0 also tests for um, the total chlorine. And then you have the um, SenseSafe Exact iDip or Pool Exact testers that do uh, total chlorine also. The test strips uh, really won't give you um, your total chlorine accurately, so I wouldn't rely on that completely. So again, you want to have your um, chlorine level at a certain level in your pool to make the sanitizer effective. And based on all the data of the research, three parts per million is probably the ideal level because the chlorine is effective at that level. And there are factors that will make the chlorine less effective in the pool, such as very high cyanuric acid levels and also um, very high pH in the pool. So take into account some factors that will make the chlorine less effective and you want to make sure you maintain the proper level in the pool um, with the sanitizer that you choose. And so back to the apps that you can use to calculate the, um, the amount of um, chlorine to add to your pool. So the poolcalculator.com, you would add, you would put in what you tested the chlorine level at. So if you tested it, it's at one parts per million and you want to raise it to three parts per million. And let's say your pool is 20,000 gallons. You would enter also what sanitizer you're using in your pool. So if you're using liquid chlorine, there's a drop down menu and you can select the strength of that chlorine and then it'll give you the dosage of the chlorine you're using to raise the um, chlorine level in the pool to three parts per million. And this is the easiest way to do it. Um, there's another app by Orenda. Um, they also have a dosage calculator that's really good and you could use that one also. Um, so both of these are great ways to, are great apps to use to calculate your dosage. If you have a Taylor test kit, there's a chart that you can use in the booklet that shows you the dosage also for your size pool based on the chlorine reading. So all of these are, are great ways to um, know how much chlorine to add to your pool. And of course you need to know your pool size in order to calculate the dosage. Most of the um, shocks and other things you add to your pool Go off of a baseline of, of a 10,000 gallon pool. So if your pool is 20,000 gallons, you would just double the dosage of the recommended amount on the back of the bag of the shock if you're using a, a pool shock of some type. But again, the online calculators are the best way to calculate dosage and the apps on your phone are the best way to calculate dosage based on your pool size. And I highly recommend downloading one of those on your phone and using that to calculate your dosage. So one of the best aspects of liquid chlorine of course is it's readily available and even though the percentage seems low um, it's a liquid form of a sanitizer so you can't really 
equate it directly with, say, you know, a bag of Cal Hypo, which is 67% um, active ingredient, um, because it's measured in liquid form, doesn't translate exactly into the powdered granular form. So a rule of thumb, 12.5% liquid chlorine is about equal to one pound of a bag of shock as far as strength. So it's not weaker because the percentage seems lower. Um, it's very strong and very potent and it's the preferred sanitizer for mo most commercial accounts. And it seems like it's the preferred sanitizer um, from those that answered the survey here on YouTube. And some of the good benefits of the liquid chlorine are there, are no, there is no cyanuric acid in liquid chlorine or stabilizer or conditioner. Um, there's other ways of terming the word sanit um, stabilizer. Um, so basically, liquid chlorine does not, have, does not add cyanuric acid to your pool by using it. So you can dump in 20 gallons of it and your cyanuric acid level will not move up one bit because there's no stabilizer in the liquid chlorine. Um, so that's a benefit there. However, that's also a drawback because if there's no stabilizer in liquid chlorine, you need to have stabilizer or conditioner in your pool. So you have to add cyanuric acid to your pool and keep the level at 30 to 50 parts per million to avoid the chlorine burning out by the sun's UV rays. Typically, if you pour a gallon of liquid chlorine in the pool and the cyanuric acid level, the CY is at zero, the chlorine will last about two hours in that pool in a typical summer day when the sun's hitting the water. So the cyanuric acid is definitely important to protect um, the liquid chlorine from burning off too quickly. And of course, the pH is also a factor, so you want to keep your pH in the ideal range of 7.4 to 7.6 to make the chlorine more effective and to make it um, uh, the kill factor a lot faster. Um, but with the lower pH, the chlorine does actually burn off faster too. So um, there's a lot of factors that affect liquid chlorine in the pool. And so basically you're going to be adding a lot of liquid chlorine in the summertime more than you would think to keep the chlorine level at three parts per million, especially in a larger pool um, or a pool that gets hit by the sun or the water is really warm all season long. So don't be surprised if you're using a gallon of liquid chlorine every three or four days in your pool to keep it at three parts per million. So that takes me to the next type of uh, state, uh, sanitizer, which is the three inch trichlor tablets. And these are those white pucks that you see at the pool store. And they usually come in a 25 or 50 pound bucket. And these are stabilized chlorine. And what that means is that they have um, part of what makes trichlor trichlor is that they have cyanuric acid in them and it's in the name of the product itself um, so the trichlor tablets have about 50 percent per volume of the of the bucket is cyanuric acid so if you use a 50 pound bucket in one season in your pool you're adding about 25 pounds of cyanuric acid to the water and pretty much that is a lot of cyanuric acid to add to your pool water so I used the poolcalculator.com and I, I put in a 20,000 gallon pool and I put the cyanuric acid level at zero to start the season. And then I put the goal at 150 parts per million and it came out to 25 pounds of cyanuric acid to bring it to 150 parts per million. So if you're using a 50 pound bucket of tablets during the season in your 20,000 gallon pool, you're going to bring the cyanuric acid level up to 150 parts per million. And with the acceptable level at 50 parts per million, you're actually 100 parts per million over that range. So that's why using trichlor tablets or overusing them um, is bad for your pool. Basically, with the cyanuric acid level that high, you're going to have water quality issues. When the cyanuric acid level gets over 100 parts per million, one of the things that you have to do is keep your free chlorine level at a higher level for it to be effective mainly because the way cyanuric acid works it bonds and unbonds with the chlorine molecule to protect it from the sun and if the cyanuric acid level is really high this process is slowed down making the chlorine less effective so with the cyanuric acid level in a pool over 100 parts per million you're going to notice algae forming even with a pretty high chlorine level because the chlorine is not as effective. And you may notice that the water is a little bit cloudier, again, because the chlorine is not as effective. So 
one way to prevent the hyaluronic acid from the tablet is not to overuse them. So if you're using a 50 pound bucket of tablets during your season in a 20,000 gallon pool, you're probably using too many tablets um, because you're adding a lot of cyanuric acid. So you would supplement your tablet use with uh, shock or liquid chlorine so that you're using less tablets and then you're going to be using unstabilized um, chlorine to supplement the tablet use. So if you were adding three or four tablets a week to your pool, try adding one or two tablets and using liquid chlorine or a bag of Cal Hypo Shock to uh, bring the chlorine level up in your pool and stabilize it. And that way, if you just use 20 pounds of the trichlor tablets in a season, you're only adding about 10 pounds of cyanuric acid to the pool. So that'll bring the level up to 60 parts per million. So you can see that if you cut back on your tablet use, the cyanuric acid level in the pool drops dramatically. So try to go from using a 50 pound bucket of tablets down to using 20 pounds in your pool and that'll keep the cyanuric acid level very stable in your pool. Again, with a 20,000 gallon pool, a 50 pound bucket of tablets in one season will raise it to 150 and using 20 pounds of tablets will only raise it to 60 parts per million. So it's a dramatic difference if you cut back on using the amount of trichlor tablets in your pool. One of the nice things about the trichlor tablets and why they're heavily used in the industry is because they have they will dissolve slowly in the pool over the course of a week. So this will be letting um, some sanitizer in the pool gradually all week long. So you will need to be adding chlorine during the week in most cases. So that's why they're very popular um, and the use is so widely used in the industry for that reason because in the pool service we can't go back two or three times to add chlorine to the pool. So the tablets become a primary way to sanitize the pool. One other thing you can do if you're using a lot of trichlor tablets is to use an enhancer of some type to minimize the amount of tablets by making the chlorine more effective. And there are different there are different enhancers you can use. Uh, the PoolRx is one of them. You can use a combination of phosphate remover and enzymes. And you can use you can add borates to your pool, and these are all ways to enhance the chlorine and make it more effective, thereby reducing the amount of tablets you would use in the pool. So um, I think if you're using trichlor tablets, you want to try to minimize the use of it, so that your cyanuric acid level doesn't go crazy in your pool and cause all kinds of uh, water quality issues. Next would be the salt water generator salt water system. And this came in at 24%. So a lot of homeowners do have a saltwater system. Basically what a saltwater system does is produce the chlorine for you and add it to the pool for you. So this makes um, keeping the sanitizer level in your pool extremely easy. And the saltwater systems are really effective in sanitizing the pool. Basically the same process that's used to make liquid chlorine in the factory is going to be used at your equipment pad if you have a salt water generator or salt water system um, as they're termed producing the sanitizer for you. So a salt water system is a chlorine pool. It just generates the chlorine um, at the equipment area through the salt cell. And this is a highly effective way again of sanitizing the pool. Basically if you have a um, Pentair iChlor 30 and you're running your pool um, 24 hours a day um, it would probably produce about one pound of chlorine for your pool. And you can kind of get an idea if you're running your pool maybe 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day, you're making half a pound of chlorine for your pool, which is a lot of chlorine, um, definitely a lot of chlorine. So um, you don't need to have your saltwater system at 100% in most cases, unless you have a very large pool, nor do you have to run it 24 hours to sanitize your pool. So one of the, the side effects of the saltwater generator is that it produces a lot of chlorine so you may have a really high chlorine level until you dial that down. I've had saltwater pools with 10 parts per million or higher of chlorine because they were just outputting way too much chlorine into the pool. Another side effect of the saltwater generator is that it will constantly raise the pH in your pool. So it's kind of a constant battle of trying to keep that pH in check with the saltwater generator um, but it does effectively add chlorine to the pool you do need to have cyanuric acid in a saltwater pool. Some recommend 80 parts per million because of the way the saltwater system produces the chlorine, but 30 to 50 parts per million is sufficient. I have a saltwater generator. I tested my cyanuric acid the other day and it's at 45 
parts per million. So that's plenty for my pool um, with my saltwater generator running. Um, I've done several podcasts on saltwater systems. You can refer to those about the cost, the effectiveness. Um, but I definitely recommend if you're looking for an easy way to sanitize your pool and you don't, you're don't, tired of the tri- trichlor tablets or adding liquid chlorine every week, the saltwater system is definitely the way to go. And it looks like from the response, a lot of people are using saltwater systems to stabilize, to uh, sanitize their pools. And I was a little surprised at the survey results for Cal Hypo. It's coming in at 6%. Cal Hypo, um, I think, is widely used in the industry and also in different regions of the country. I know in Florida, it's popular down there. Um, it's popular here in California also. Um, it's basically a... Um, sanitizer that's not stabilized also and it does raise the calcium level in the pool Um, the Cal Hypo name um, has the the word calcium in it Um, so it will add calcium to the pool and so if you have um, high calcium levels in your region you don't want to use Cal Hypo because then it'll definitely raise the calcium level of your pool and cause scaling issues so uh, but Cal Hypo is um, not widely used apparently by the survey Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but basically um, you can buy the bag of shock at your pool store or online and the Cal Hypo has a really long shelf life so if you have some left over from one season to the next it's still going to be highly effective since Cal Hypo is a strong oxidizer if you have any metals in your water and you add Cal Hypo um, you could see black staining develop on your surface pretty quickly and that can be easily reversed once the um, Cal Hypo wears off a little bit or the clean level drops. You can also reverse any kind of staining by using a metal sequestering agent and that will remove that um, because Cal Hypo is a very high oxidizer and it also can make the pool really cloudy if you add it directly to the water. Um, so definitely keep that in mind when you're using the Cal Hypo shock and you probably want to dilute it in a bucket of water if you're going to use it in a vinyl pool you wouldn't want that on the bottom staining it. And then last, I'm going to touch on dichlor. It came in at 1%, so it's not widely used out there. It's a granular form of chlorine, um, and it does contain cyanuric acid. Similar to the trichlor tablets, about half of the dichlor is cyanuric acid, and it doesn't seem like it's being widely used out there, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But it's an option for you if you wanted to maybe bring up your cyanuric acid level and your chlorine level at the same time you would use the dichlor and it's safe for all surfaces you can put it in there and it won't cause any damage it's quickly it quickly dissolves in the pool um, but it does have the cyanuric acid in there so if you use a 50 pound bucket of dichlor in your pool during the season again you're going to be adding 25 pounds of cyanuric acid to the pool and i think the price point of dichlor is probably one of the reasons why it hasn't caught on it's fairly expensive You don't need too much of it to raise the chlorine level in your pool, but I think the price of it is off-putting when you can um, get liquid chlorine and the trichlor tablet is cheaper than you can get the dichlor for. So it doesn't seem like it's widely used anyway out there in the market. Um, Again, liquid chlorine came in first with trichlor tablets closely behind it, and then the saltwater system in third, which I think will probably increase as uh, more new pools are being built and saltwater generators are added to them. Um, They're just a great way to sanitize the pool. But I hope you found this helpful in choosing the right sanitizer for your pool. And I tried to give you the pros and cons of the ones that came out in the survey here um, that I did on my YouTube channel. With that said, if you're looking for more help with your pool care, definitely check out my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. I have a lot of helpful web pages there, and I have an ebook available for $9.99. And if you do service for a living and you want to enhance your business or you're just getting started, definitely check out my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. There are a lot of great benefits there for joining the coaching group. You can learn more about the coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week. God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy 
and solutions and expertise to do it right.